Now from equation 1 we can write your longitudinal stress sigma is equal to E by R multiplied by Y. Now since E is a Young's modulus which is constant and R is a radius of curvature, we can write sigma longitudinal stress is directly proportional to Y where Y is the vertical distance of the layer from the neutral axis. This shows that as we move away from the neutral axis, the magnitude of stresses increases and it increases linearly. Now let us consider the cross section of the beam whose B and D are width and depth. Let us consider a small elemental area DA which is at the same distance vertical distance Y from the neutral axis. For pure bending, the net normal force on the cross section will be equal to zero. Normal force on the cross section is nothing but longitudinal force when we see in this view. So we can write mathematically as integral of sigma multiplied by dA is equal to zero. So if we substitute the value of sigma from our previous equation two, we can write it as integral of E by R into Y into dA is equal to zero. Now since E by R is constant, let me take this out. E by R is equal to integral of Y dA. Now this indicates the condition that neutral axis passes through the centroid of the section. Now let us consider the bending moment caused due to this normal forces on this cross section. We have bending moment is equal to moment of all normal forces about x x axis. So the magnitude of this bending moment m can be given as integral of sigma dA into y where sigma dA is a force and y is a vertical distance from the neutral axis. So this is equal to if we substitute the value of sigma we have this is equal to e by r into y into dA multiplied by y. So this we have e by r integral of y square dA. But we know that integral of y square dA is nothing but moment of inertia i of the section about x x axis. So upon substituting the value of i in this equation we get m is equal to e by r multiplied by i. So upon taking i on the left hand side we get m by i is equal to e by r. Let this be equation 4. Now combining equation 1 and 4 we can write the formula which is called as flexural formula as m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by r. So this is your flexural formula where m is the magnitude of bending moment in newton meter i is the moment of inertia of section about xx axis unit is meter to the power 4 sigma is the bending stress at a layer y from neutral axis unit will be newton per meter square which is a consistent unit with the magnitude of bending moment then E is a Young's modulus of material in Newton per meter square and R is the radius of curvature of beam in meter. Now if we consider the equation 2 again, we saw that the longitudinal stress or bending stress is directly proportional to your vertical distance y from the neutral axis. So if we have a rectangular cross section beam which is symmetrical cross section upon application of sagging bending moment we know that the upper layer will be subjected to compression whereas lower layer will be subjected to tension. So we also see that your compressive stress increases from the neutral axis linearly and it is maximum at the extreme distance yc max from the neutral axis. So the compressive stress at the distance yc max from neutral axis is sigma c max meaning that compressive stress is maximum. Now since our section is symmetrical on the other end, we'll have maximum tensile stress, which will be at a distance of yt max.
Also, if the same beam is subjected to hogging moment, we know that the upper layer will be subjected to tension while the lower layer will be subjected to compression. And the respective stresses and the extreme distances from neutral axis will be as shown in this figure. So if we know the maximum tensile stress and maximum compressive stress and if we know the dimensions of the beam, we can determine the compressive stress and tensile stress at any section of the beam by using the similarity of triangle equations. Thanks for watching in 5 minutes.